Good morning, I hope you're well. So I've got a really cool effect to teach you today that you can use on your own websites. Uh, there's an example of it on the screen here. And this is kind of all the rage at the moment. I think it's really cool as well. It's called, well, I think it's called glass, glass morphism, or you might hear it referred to as frosted glass, effect, uh, frosted glass effect. But essentially what's happening is you've got a box up here uh, and you can see through the box, but it's like frosted, so it's slightly opaque. So the benefit of that is your text still shows and people can still read your text, but you can see the background image behind it. So I think it's a really cute effect. It's really simple to do with a little bit of knowledge here using the block editor. And you don't need to know any code. I'm gonna show you a really cool website that will generate the CSS code we need to actually get this effect. And, and you can actually change the effect as well. So you can change the amount of blur and how much the image um, shows through as well. So it's really cool. Uh, it'll only take you about five minutes to use on your websites. We're not using any plugins whatsoever. We're just gonna be using the core Gutenberg block editor. So I hope you enjoy it and here we go. Right, there are just three simple steps for you to get this lovely glass effect working. The first one is to, we, we're gonna need some um, CSS code that we're gonna then use on our sites. And there is this fantastic um, website called glassmorphism.com that will generate the code automatically for you. Um, I'll put a link down in the description as well, but here we are, this is the website. You just go here, glassmorphism.com. And this is where you can basically generate your code. You get a little, little preview up here. So you can see this is showing you the current effect. And then down here, you've just got some settings to change or not. And you see as you change these, so I'm changing the transparency setting here, you see the previews changing up here. So you can play with this and get the effect that you want. So you've got some settings, you've got a blur value here. This will change the amount of blur behind. You see how those, the thing to keep an eye on when you're testing this is the little sphere here. That gives you a good indication of the blur effect. Um, and then you can also do things like color here as well if you want to, or whether to show the outline. Pretty much the standard setting when you first come here is kind of the one I've been using and it seems a really great one. So this is the code we're gonna use in a second. We'll come back here in a minute, but that's kind of step one. Go to glassmorphism.com, have a play. Um, and then we're gonna to start to basically build this page. So this is the effect we're going for, just to recap, where we've got basically a box with some text in it, uh, but the box has this frosted glass effect so we can see the background image. Now today we're gonna to be using the cover block um, to gen generate this effect. The cover block is a great block because it's a container block, which means you can put other blocks within it. So I'm gonna add that to start with. I'm, all I'm gonna do is find the cover block here, which is this one here, and I'm gonna drag it into my page and I'm gonna choose a background image, which I've already got ready, this one here. Okay, now you, you've got to think a little bit carefully about which background image um, to use for this effect uh, because obviously if you're going to have light text on a dark image or dark um, text on a light image, if you see what I mean. So you, have a, you, know, you need to think a little bit carefully. And then I'm just going to write my title here, which is City Breaks. And I'm going to make this huge by changing the custom size here. So let's go really big. Okay, and I could do other cute stuff as well. Let's make the breaks a bit more bold. Okay, and I can change the, the height of my cover block, block just by dragging this little slider up and down, down here. Okay, so that's kind of my background image. And then all I'm gonna do within that is I'm gonna put a columns block and that's gonna let me target a specific area to, to create my box essentially. So the cover block is in the design um, blocks here. I'm gonna drag that underneath my heading. And I, or today I'm just gonna use a two column equally split columns columns block and there we go that sets my columns my two columns and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dummy text in this first one now obviously you could put headings in here or, or buttons in here you know whatever you like you can put you know different blocks within it and let's also put one over here as well just to show you the difference now that there's, there's there's kind of two steps to get this we're going to go and copy this CSS code and I'm gonna show you how you use it on your sites. The first thing is you need to target the column where you want to apply that code to, okay? So if we look at our three lines up here, that's gonna show us the hierarchy. So one of the challenges you're gonna have with this, and it's not a difficult challenge, is you just need to make sure you've um, selected the right column. Uh, and it will show you the hierarchy when you click on these three lines here, okay? So the columns block, you can see that's the top level. 
and within that top level I've actually got two columns. So I would want to select this column here and it'll give you this, this border to tell you that you selected the right one. You can also use, which I find really, really useful, these breadcrumbs down here. These are fantastic whenever you're struggling to select the right element or the right block within blocks. So we can see now we've actually selected the column block. And then we need to apply a class to it, a CSS class to that block. And we do that over here on the right. Um, you'll see we've selected the block. And then what we're after is this advanced tab here. You click on that. And this is what we're after here, this additional CSS classes. Now you can call this what you like. I'm going to, um, but you're going to need to remember what you call it. I'm not sure what I've typed there. I'm going to call this class. Okay, nice and simple. If you want to test this on your own sites, I will put a link to the, the code I'm using so you can just copy exactly what I'm doing if, if that's what you want to do. So that's the car class, and that is just applied to this left-hand column. If I want to apply it to this column as well, then I could do the same thing. In fact, let's do that now. So I'm going to apply that class to those two columns separately and then update it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Let's, um, apply that class to the sections you want to. Now at the moment it won't do anything, it'll just look like this. Okay. Now the next step is we need to go back to glassmorphism.com and we need to copy the CSS. Okay, and it will say copy to clipboard, so we know we've copied it. So we've got our code, then we go back to our website, and this is where we apply that code and add that code so it actually has an effect. So you click on customize, okay, which will open up the left hand theme customizer panel. Here we go. And then what we're after here is additional CSS. This is where we actually copy and paste that CSS. Okay, so we click on that. Now the thing you have to get right here is you have to put in your class, but you have to put a dot before it because that's the right convention. So you go dot class, that's what I've called mine. And this has to be the same name as the one you've called yours. And then you want to put curly bracket um, like so, and it'll, it'll Create the end one for you as well, that's essential, so you want to leave that, otherwise things will break. And then you literally just paste that in like so. Paste that code that you've got from glassmorphism.com. And can you see it's actually applied that um, CSS effect. Now in here is all the CSS we need. Now the other thing that I'd like to do here, because you can see how it's a little bit tight around there, is probably add some padding. Okay, so you can just go padding, this is just CSS. And then you can just put in, I put in 20 pixels, but you can adjust that to play with. And again, I'll put a link to this exact code. So if you want to just replicate what I'm doing on here, you can do it. And there we go. There's my, um, that lovely glass effect working nicely on those two boxes, looking fantastic. Uh, and again, you can go back here and tweak this. You know, you can play around with the transparency and just copy that code and then just paste it back in. Um, the other thing that I did on the demo website with the cover block, I made it full width. And this is just an option in the cover block here that you can just set that to be full width. And that will then just spread all the way across the page, which for my design is something I particularly want to do. And there we go, there's that fantastic frosted glass effect. So I hope you like that. If you found it useful, it'd be great to give it a thumbs up so it, it spreads the word about what you can do. Uh, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, then hit the subscribe button below because I'm doing loads of tutorials around the Gutenberg block editor at the moment. I'm trying to do two a week. So if you want to learn more cool tricks like this, uh, do subscribe. But thank you so much and I shall see you soon.